Hi, and welcome to this Leverage Technologies customer presentation of SAP Yamira. This session is part of our monthly customer seminar sessions where we're looking to update Leverage Technologies customers on some of the latest functions, features, and offerings available from SAP. During this session, we're going to focus on SAP Yamira, which is a reporting visualization and business intelligence tool made available to report not only on SAP Business One, but also on multiple other data sources as well. So before we open up SAP Lumira and start to present what's available, let's have a brief discussion about the SAP Lumira product. So what is SAP Lumira? It's effectively self-service business intelligence. And I love this term associated with SAP Lumira because the two very important things about SAP Lumira is self-service, write your own reports, create your own reports. No need for IT resource or external consultants. You can physically create your own reports in SAP Lumira. Very important point. The second thing to note is that it is true business intelligence. So more than simple reporting, SAP Lumira offers a business intelligence tool which allows us to slice and douse our information. So let's have a look at sales. Let's drag in sales by quarter, sales by month. Let's drag in budget. Let's drag in salesperson. Let's start to slice and dice our information. So true self-service business intelligence. Why Lamira? Why are these visualization tools? Well, the stats are something like we remember 80% of what we see. And in terms of what we hear, we probably only remember 10 to 20%. So visualization is an important aspect taking data, visualizing it, people remember it. I touched on this at the start of the presentation, but very important, the ability to create your own reports. So we'll see this as we go into SAP Lumira and we run some reports. But one of the critical aspects here is that having imported data into SAP Lumira, you can create and run your own reporting. Let's go and have a look at how that works. What I'm going to do is I'm logged into SAP Lumira and I'm going to say new document. What I can see is that there are multiple data sets available to be imported into SAP Lumira. Microsoft Excel, CSV or text files, copy from clipboard, connect to SAP HANA, SQL, etc. So if you're using SAP Business One and you're on SQL Server or the HANA version, you can import data from those aspects. However, if you want a third party database, for example, your payroll database sitting on SQL or information that you simply push to an Excel spreadsheet. Again, you can bring that information in to the Lumira reporting tool. Now, for most of our customers, obviously, you're going to be bringing in the reporting aspects, the dimensions and measures from within SAP Business One HANA or SAP Business One SQL. But for the point of this presentation, I'm just going to very quickly bring some data in from an Excel spreadsheet. Let's go in and let's uh, just uh, create that customer data in a spreadsheet. Let's bring that in. And I can see the data. Of course, I can import one or multiple spreadsheets. I can show the record count to see if I've got roughly the right amount of records. I can do an advanced check on the data. Let's create this data into the Lumira reporting tool. Now, if we were running this data from SAP Business One SQL or HANA, very similar process, but obviously we'd have to have the server password, etc., to get security access into that data. Now that the data appears in SAP Business One or SAP Lumira, let's have a look. Typically what we want to do is prepare our data. This is bringing the data in from SAP Business One, from spreadsheets or from third-party database. We want to visualize our data. This is our ability to create visualizations or reports with that business intelligence type look and feel where we can slice and dice our data. Then we want to compose our data. And SAP Lumira uses the concept of storyboards where we can compose various elements of these visualizations, reports, and data into wonderful storyboards with commentary. And then we share the data. We push the data into the cloud. We push it into PDF. We share that data. So let's create some visualizations or reports. On the left-hand side, I have my measures and dimensions. Measures are typically elements like quantity and value, numeric values. Me uh, dimensions, typically here I have city, date, item, product group, brand, etc. 
As we move towards the right hand side, I can see that I can do multiple different reporting types. So bar and column charts, bar chart, column chart, stacked bar chart, bar chart with two x-axes. I can do multiple different line charts and area charts, multiple different bar charts. I can do multiple different geographical charts. Very, very uh, nice reporting here where I can start to look at my sales by Brisbane, Melbourne, Sydney, ACT, etc. And things like heat maps, etc. So let's go and create some reports. We'll start with a simple report. Let's bring in quantity. Nice little feature. As I drag the quantity field over the x-axis, gives me a tick to say, yes, you can drop that field here. If I try over the y-axis, cross, no, I can't. So let's drop it over the x-axis. And I can see my quantity of sales of bikes. In this instance, the data I'm using is bicycles sold across ACT, New South Wales, Queensland, and Victoria. And I can see that in total, I sold 324 bikes. Very simple analysis. But now let's start to see how we can slice and dice some of this data. Oh, by the way, I want to have a look at that by quantity by item. Now I can see the items and I can see straight away a trend. I sold 70 of the Bondi uh, 256 bikes and I sold 123 of the BMC R256, my two best sellers. And I can see all the other items. By the way, if I want to sort this data, I can go in and I can sort this data and say, actually, I just want to see my top six bikes. And the system will now just show me rank the top six, for example. Nice little feature. Let's get rid of that. So I'm just slicing and dicing the data. Actually, I don't want to look at it by data. I want to look at my sales. Let's get rid of item. I want to look at my sales by brand. Now let's also create, in terms of city, let's go in and let's just create measures for the city or hierarchies. Let's go in and create hierarchies because we want to start reporting by Brisbane, Melbourne, etc. So let's ask the system to create geographical data. So region is going to be region, which is New South Wales, Victoria. That's how I've created it in my data. And city is city, Brisbane, Sydney, etc. Look at this, very, very simple. SAP Lemira has now taken my ACT Canberra, New South Wales, Sydney, and has mapped those to geographical regions. We're gonna use that a little bit later on, so let's just click done. For now, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bring in, I can see it's created my sub-dimensions here. I'm just gonna bring in city as well, brand and city. So now I've got sales of quantity by brand and city. So I can see under the BMC, the Bondi, and the Scott brand, the three brands, I can see what I sold by city. Actually, I prefer that by city then by brand. So let me change that round. Let me take city up above brand. Now I can see my sales by city and then by brand. Actually, I don't have this one by city. I've got it by region, but I could just as easily region then city. I can move it around however I want. Okay. So of course that report happens to be line chart, but I could uh, I could move it around. So column chart, I could move it around like this. I can say Actually, I want a column chart. Let's move it around like that. Let's leave that report. So that's our first report we've written. Nice and simple. We've sliced and diced it a little bit. Let's now go in. Let's create another report. Let's create a report that is quantity by salesperson. And by the way, let's make this one a pie chart. Okay, I like that report. Let's now go and create another report, last one by quantity. Let's create a geographical report by quantity. What did we sell where? So let's drag in quantity. Let's drag in city. And let's have a look at this one by, I think, brand. Before we drag in brand, we're sitting in a meeting. We can see straight away. Melbourne, 115 bikes. Canberra, 99. Sydney, 87. Brisbane, 23. Let's show the data labels. Now we can see it on there. Now we're sitting in the meeting and someone says, yeah, I like that, but what did we sell by brand? Okay, well, let's have a look. Let's just drag that in. There we go. Let's see by brand. And now we can see by brand. We start to see some trends. We can see that in Melbourne, we sell a lot of the Bondi bike. Whereas in Canberra, we don't sell a lot of the Bondi bike. We start to see that in Sydney, we sell mostly the BMC brand. Let's now do this by brand. Let's do it by product group, rather. Let's bring in product group. So we change that around. Change the view to product group. Nice and simple. Again, we're starting to detect some trends. We can see that we sell mountain bikes mostly in Canberra. Now, if I want, I could sort this by product group. Oh, let's just go down here. Get a bit more detailed. Let's drag it into the trellis by row. And now what I start to see is by geography, my three groups, casual bikes, mountain bikes, and race bikes, 
And again, I can see some trends. I can see that mountain bikes I sell mostly in Canberra, not so many in Melbourne, and very few in Brisbane. But I can see the race bikes I sell mostly in Sydney, not so many in Canberra. So I like that report. Let's leave that one as is. Let's create another report now. Let's go in. Let's create a report by quantity. Let's put in gross profit. And let's put in some dates. So let's go into date. Now on the date field, let's say to the system, actually, we didn't want quantity. That's the wrong field. Let's get rid of quantity. Let's bring in value, rather. Value and gross profit. Okay, now let's go into the date field and let's create some date time hierarchy. So let's click on that. Beautiful. What we've got now is year, quarter, month, etc. So there's my sales and there's my gross profit. Let's now bring in by quarter. Now we're in the management meeting and someone says, you know, Brett, I'm not overly interested in the quarters. There they are. I'm actually interested in the months. Okay, well, let's just bring in the months. Now there are the months in the system. Actually, I'm not interested in gross profit. I'm interested in value versus budget. Okay, let's bring budget in. Now we have value versus budget by month. And we can see that in the January and February, we way exceeded budget. Then it's been a bit tighter from then on. Actually, I don't want to view it in that. I want to view it like this in a line chart. Okay, there it is. Right, let's do another report. Let's go in and create another report. In this instance, let's do uh, another geographical report quickly. Let's create another one. Let's do this one, a geo pie chart. Let's drag in value. Let's drag in city. Let's drag in product group. Oh, sorry, I didn't bring in city correctly. Let's bring that in. Okay. And there's our next report. Let's put those labels on it again. Okay. Don't forget you can drill down. I can drill down, I can filter. So actually I don't want to look uh, you know, for certain elements. Uh, I do want to look for other elements, etc. Let's get rid of that. Okay. So I can do other aspects associated. So I'm just looking at Canberra. Let's get rid of that filter. So I can filter, I can do other elements as well associated with that report. Okay, so we've written a couple of reports. Let's write one more quickly. Let's go in and let's write a report in this instance by value. And let's do it by month. And let's do it by brand. Okay. Now what I want to do is, um, I'll tell you what, let's, let's get rid of brand. And let's do some predictive analysis. So I'm going to go into value. I can sort by ascending, sort by descending. I can rank my values. I can add a calculation, moving average, percentages, etc. Let's do a predictive calculation. So now what I want to do, I'm looking at my current sales and I want to predict future sales. So let's go and let's change the bar chart type. Let's change our line chart. That works better for predictive analysis. Let's go in and say, I'm going to do a predictive calculation. Let's forecast with SAP predictive analysis. Now, the system says, do you want to use predictive analysis or triple exponential smoothing? How many months do you want to forecast? Let's say six. Now, obviously, with any forecasting at this point in time, the system's going to want multiple touch points. I'm simply using demo data, so I may not have enough touch points. But let's go in and let's do some predictive analysis. Yep, the system's moaning at me saying I don't really have enough touch points to be overly accurate, but I'll give this a go. And there we go. I've got my actual sales and my forecast sales. Of course, I could have used other methods. So when I went in there, I could also use in my predictive calculation linear regression. Um, I could go in and have a look at that. And I could say predict six months on a linear regression, for example. The system will show me that downward trend in my sales because Q1 was high, Q4 not so high. Or I could use alternative methods. For example, I could go in and say, let's use triple exponential smoothing, and let's do six months of that, and away I go. So now I've got, again, you can see the system here is predicting that in January, February, I'm going to have some fairly high sales because those are my peak months based on current trend. Okay, so what I've done here is I've created a number of visualizations or reports. Some of them are geographical, some are pie charts, some have got forecast analysis in them. As I said, I can do other things. I can, for example, come in and do calculations, moving average, percentage of, difference from. I can rank uh, these elements. 
I can go in here and I can show data labels, change the axes, change the colors, etc. But what I'm going to move on to now, having created these visualizations, is we're going to compose a storyboard. So let's go in and have a look at how that will work. Inside SAP Business One, the storyboard is the ability to now take those various visualizations and present them in a storyboard. So let's have a look. Let's call it Leverage Bike Sales um, Australia 2015. Let's just take a standard storyboard, create. Now, on the left hand side, I have my visualizations. I can add text, I can add pictures. I can add input controls, pictograms, and shapes. Let's just bring a picture in. Let's bring in the, uh, let's import from my desktop. Let's bring in the Leverage logo because we're going to want to use that. Let's go back to our visualizations and let's create our storyboard. Now, in one scenario, you may go into the meeting with your notebook and you're connected up to your main SAP database and you're slicing and dicing information to create the visualizations, as you've just seen. But perhaps in preparation for uh, that meeting, that management meeting, what you want to do is send everyone um, in the cloud or via PDF or via export, you want to send them examples of the reports you're planning to show. So let's create that now. Let's drag in the reports we want to see. I want to see quantity by city and brand. I want to see by salesperson. And I want to see value budget. Okay, so I've created a little uh, storyboard here. Let's move, let's create this one. Let's move it up a little bit. Let's tidy this up. A fraction, make that a bit smaller. Move that up. Okay, uh, now let's do this. Let's make this a bit smaller. Let's bring in um, the leverage logo. Let's put that over there. Okay, now let's go in and let's um, change this to be uh, bike. Sales 2015, high quantity and value, and I'll say region, and let's take the top heading, let's say, what should we say here, let's, uh, let's just get rid of this, and we'll say leverage technologies 2015, oh, let's get rid of the S, okay, okay. Uh, now we can put our executive summary in down here. Of course, I can do things like change a color. So for example, if I want to highlight something, I can highlight it in yellow or red or whatever the case is. I can change font size. I can do all sorts of things like that. Let's create another page. So I go and let's add another page. Let's create an overview page. And in the overview page, I'm going to drag in that report. And I'm going to drag in this report. Let's get rid of this one because I don't want it. So what I'm going to do is make this one a bit bigger and slightly wider. And again, I can change the headings and elements like that. So what we've done there is created a very quick storyboard with an executive summary and elements like that. And now I can share that storyboard through multiple mechanisms. I can go in and I can publish it to SAP HANA. I can publish to Explorer. I can push to Lumira server, to Lumira cloud, or export it as a file, so a PDF, for example, and send that up to my team. So let's see what we've done. There. We've prepared some data, either from SAP Business One or from Spreadsheet or SQL Server or HANA. Typically, if you're an SAP Business One customer on SQL or HANA, you'll be bringing it in through that mechanism. We have visualized the reports by dragging and dropping the information we want to see using dynamic forecasting as well, using geo mapping for our uh, maps, for example, using date elements to do by quarter, by month, etc. We can, of course, drill down. I haven't really showed that in any detail, but we can drill down as well uh, to a greater level of detail. We can sort the reports. Then what we did is we took those reports and we composed them into a storyboard uh, with the multiple reports and our executive summary and our headings and logo, etc. Then we share the report. So what we've given you there is an overview of SAP Lumira, one of multiple technologies that SAP is working on and integrating to SAP Business One. And I picture this as a, a visualization or business intelligence tool that's aimed at a user who's not all that technical. So you don't have to have a vast amount of technical knowledge to use the SAP Lumira. In fact, um, you can just drag and drop your dimensions and fields 
onto the report in Slice and Dice. So I'm envisaging salespeople, sales managers, purchasing managers, not necessarily only the IT team, but the management team being able to slice and dice their own data inside this business intelligence tool without the need for IT or consultants to get involved. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Please don't forget that there are a number of other presentations available on our website at leveragetech.com.au. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the presentation.